fifth quarter. 28, I think this is year 28. They started in 1990, you said. Well, I, that's what I was trying to think of uh, in my preparation. I think I used to come to these in the early 90s. Miss Beth, you was right in there. Is that about right? Yeah, it started in 1990. 1990, so I would have been a junior, I guess, maybe. First or second time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know if you guys have had an opportunity to uh, be under Brother Jack's thumb, but it's really enjoyable. Because he, Miss Beth knows what I'm talking about. He, uh, he he's kind of relentless, if you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, um, I, I've told Brother Jack two or three different times I was going to do what teachers do and get a guest speaker for tonight, but he kept he kept pushing me off and wouldn't let me do that. So uh, here we are. Um, I, Brother Jack would probably tell you different from what I'm getting ready to say, but uh, I, I'm still going to say it because it's the truth. I put a lot of thought into what I was going to talk about tonight, maybe what I can approach you guys with to see whether or not to uh, make a difference, or at least maybe make, make you think about things uh, as a Christian. Have um, you guys ever procrastinated on, on a homework assignment or something like that? <laughs> Pretty much everybody. Okay. I mean, you guys have been working on the homework assignment in the cafeteria at the table, and the teacher walks up behind you, and it's <laughs> happening right then. Okay. Well, my wife, who's not much of a of a guard dog whatsoever, I'm sitting there in the chair uh, at the football game, got all my stuff done that I was supposed to be doing, and uh, sat down to write down a few notes. And Brother Jack comes up behind me and sees me studying for tonight. <laughs> yes, I'm getting ready for it here. So. But he was, a, he was a pretty good sport about it. He didn't give me too much of a bad time about it. Um, Hugo, who's incessantly asking me questions, asked me, what are you going to teach on tonight? Is it going to be creation? Because that's what we've been teaching on Wednesday night. So he just automatically thinks that it's going to be something that we've heard whenever we were doing uh, David um, a few months ago. He, every, every Wednesday, hey, Dad, what are you going to teach on tonight? After the second or third week, and I responded, David. He was like, "Hey, you teaching on David tonight?" He wasn't very impressed with anything that was going on, but uh, but here we are. Um, kind of curious about. I know a lot of the young people, and I'm kind of curious about uh, some of our uh, visitors, people that I may not know, uh, churchgoers. How many of you guys go to church regularly? Just out of curiosity. So most of you guys, okay, two or three times a week, okay. What all churches we got? I know West Robins is out here. Who else we got? What other churches we got? White Rock, any White Rock people? Two, three White Rock, what other churches? So I don't know where all you guys are at. Nobody? Nobody wants to speak up? You guys are going to be quiet? You know I'm going to ask a lot of questions tonight because that's kind of what teachers do. We ask a bunch of questions. All right, so... Um, I'm just kind of curious what the audience is going to be be like. How many of you guys go to uh, youth activities? Your church does youth activities. Um, you have, you know, youth get together stuff like that. Raise your hands. Okay. Different things. I know Brother Mike does some stuff here. I know Brother Jack in the summer we do uh, church camp. You guys do church camp stuff like that at your all's churches. Go to different places. Um, I forget. I hear Mr. Rector sometimes talk about the church camp that White Rock goes to. I don't remember the name of it, but I know where we go different things like that. What about um, things that are not necessarily just for fun and for teenagers? Maybe something that's a little bit more evangelical things where you go out and witness and may get involved in those types of activities. Because everybody likes to go to the fun stuff, you know, when you're going uh, to the ark or skating or whatever, any, anything that you guys do along those lines. Anybody else? Any type of uh, witnessing or anything like that? Street preaching? Anybody doing any of that stuff every now and then, Miss Julia? Okay. Because there's different kinds of activities. Everybody likes to do the fun stuff, okay? But there's a lot that goes into those things. There's also a lot more that go, goes into being just a Christian. All right. Um, if you've got your Bible, I want to read a couple of verses out of Romans chapter 12. I don't know if it's quieter here than it was at the football field or not, Jack. It's, it's kind of quiet. Okay. 
Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, a lot of you guys probably heard this one uh, preached on before or taught on in, in a class or something like that, and they've talked about, you know, reasonable service, okay? So I'm curious what you guys, and I told you I'm a teacher, so this is what we're going to do, ask questions. What do you guys think your reasonable service for Christ is? Get the gospel out? <coughs> How would we do that? Witnessing. Witnessing. Tracks? Street preaching. Okay, so reasonably. So you guys think getting the gospel out is reasonable. What else? There's got to be more to being a Christian than just that, right? I mean, you don't want to go out without any knowledge, so what else would you do before you went out and started witnessing people? Read your Bible. Read your Bible. That's right. I mean, all these are the church answers, right? These are the things that you guys are supposed to know. What else would you do as a Christian? Supposed to. You guys pray. Thank you, Joanne. Appreciate that. Okay. Uh, a few years ago, when Ben Cross was in my Wednesday night class, anytime I would ask a question, he would always say Jesus because he was hoping <laughs> at least he would get one of those right. And uh, I mean, it was funny the first two times that he said it, but you know, after week after week, it, you know, but no. Jesus. <laughs> so you know, we all know the church answers. You know, we know we're supposed to read the Bible. We know we're supposed to pray. No, we're supposed to witness. No, we're supposed to go to church and those types of things. Okay, and everybody thinks I'm doing all right if I'm doing those things, right? Amen. So that's that's your reasonable service. Okay, but what about Paul? What what was he doing? Mission trips, putting his life on the line, getting beat. I mean, that's what. I mean, this is the bar that Paul's setting, right? That's what he's talking about. I mean, he's doing the street preaching. He's planting churches. He's out in the deep, and he's getting beat. He's getting snake bit. All this other stuff, and that's what he's doing for Christ. And that's what he's saying is reasonable. And we're talking about going to church and praying, and maybe handing out a tractor to him. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you see the difference where Paul is and what he's talking about. So, is it fair for us to compare ourselves to Paul? I mean, arguably the best Christian ever. So, what do you guys think? reasonable is for today. I mean, that was 2,000 years ago he was saying this stuff. What do we hear all the time? Things, times are what? Different. Times have changed. Even from when we did this 20 some odd years ago. You know, it was different. I mean, do we really have to sell out that much to be reasonable? Serious question. Because you guys, when I was asking you who I went to church, a vast majority of you said I go to church pretty regular, a couple times a week. And some of you guys may go with your parents, some of you guys may go on your own, which is great, that's commendable. But Paul's question is, or his statement is, this is my reasonable service. So I'm wondering if you guys really are in tune with what Paul is talking about. I mean, are we really sold out? Do we really put everything out there? How many of you guys have a clique of friends that you hang with? I mean, just a group, six or seven of you, eight or ten, however many there is, stuff like that. You usually don't. Um, once you get to Scott High, I mean, I see it all the time. Uh, a lot of times people will hang with just their friends from Robbins or Huntsville or whatever like that. And then, once they get to Scott High after a while, you can see groups starting to mesh together and you see different things like that. And that's, you know, that's, that's your group of friends, which is all which is all nice. How many of you guys invite those friends to church activities? Okay, because that's your friends, right? That's who you want to go hang with, right? How many of you guys invite other people to church activities? It's kind of a cyclical thing if you're inviting all the same church people to church activities, right? <laughs> I mean, we're, what are we supposed to be doing? What did Joanna say? Getting the gospel out, right? So I'm assuming if you guys go to church all the time, most of you, if I were asked for a raise of hands, most of you guys are Christians, right? So why would we keep asking Christians to go to church activities? Who should we be asking? The kids that we don't hang with, right? The kids that are not part of the cool kid club, kids that don't play on your sports team, kids that don't wear the coolest clothes, stuff like that, right? Kids that don't listen to the type of music that you do, or the kids that, um, you know, whatever. All of those kids. I mean, there's 820-something kids in Scott. 
a lot of people. Miss Tammy over there, she's all the time talking to kids at Birchfield. You guys, how many guys went to Birchfield? Anybody? Did you ever hear Miss Tammy say anything about God in the classroom? Pretty regularly. Okay. So I know that she's doing that in, in the classroom up there, and she's talking to everybody. <coughs> And there's 800 kids in the hallways at Sky High. That's a lot of people. Biggest witness and opportunity that you guys, some of you may ever have, <laughs> is right now. We tell that to Hugo all the time. All the time we're telling him, with somebody at school, talk to somebody at school, invite somebody you know, to church from school, somebody doesn't go. We, we, we say that to him frequently. So you guys have an opportunity on this mission field, because that's what it is, 800 kids every day, 180 days a year. And yet the only people we can really find time to hang out with are other Christians, air quotes. That's kind of harsh, isn't it? But you guys expect that from me, because those of you that know me know that that's the way I am, right? Now, am I standing up here saying that I do all these things, pray, read my Bible, and study and all that? Nope. I don't do what I'm supposed to do either. But 20 years ago, I'm in your all's shoes. And we didn't have a SWAT club, but we did have a uh, club that met here at lunch. Um, basically, just took prayer requests and, you know, talked about some scripture and stuff like that. And we did that, you know, once or twice a week or something like that. Uh, but I remember thinking, man, if I don't do this, who's going to do it? Was I really that important to God? No, there's people who step in and do stuff all the time. And it's bigger and different and grown now. You know, we have a lot of people that are in the SWAT club that try to do different things. I think you guys went to the ARC last year, is that right? Year before. Year before. So, and I remember, try to go back, and I remember being in high school thinking, you know, <coughs> what should we do to do better? but I didn't make much of an effort to. Are you guys making an effort? Reasonable? Paul's, Paul's advice there. Okay? Let's see here. What about the stuff that we do as a Christian when we read our Bible? How many of you guys pray daily? Several of you. How many of you guys read your Bible daily? Not as many. Proverbs 23, 7. For as, a, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what are you doing when you're reading your Bible? What's your intentions? What about when you're praying? Are you just asking God for stuff? Do you have to spend several minutes asking God to forgive you for your sins before you can start asking for stuff? You know, what is your intentions when you pray? Are you really praying for other people? Are you really thinking about the people that maybe, you know, Maybe you're have illnesses or whatever, going through a hard time, lost a loved one. What about when you're reading your Bible? Are you just doing it to get it done? Sometimes I find myself doing that. I try to read it every morning when I wake up. That way um, I can start the day off right and I can also not get caught up in everything else that I'm doing, working or whatever else it is. And then, you know, God gets put on the back burner again. So, reading your Bible, do you get lost when you read it? Do you think about what you read? I mean, all these are important questions, guys. Um, if you were at the game, you saw the girls uh, won, won the championship game last night in soccer, and we got a plaque. Okay, great. First time ever for Scott High Soccer. Me and Brother Jack was talking, first time in 20 years, any type of uh, championship won for Scott High. And that's great. It's wonderful. Really pleased. Me, me and, and the girls put a lot of work in. Tammy can tell you I start in June, and she refers to herself as a soccer widow because I'm always doing stuff, you know, and things for soccer. And that's all great and good. But here's the question. We as Christians are promised a few things in scriptures when we get to heaven, if we've earned it. So that district plaque, great and wonderful as it is for us, what about stuff that's going to last? And that's what God's talking about in Proverbs. How you approach things. Why you do the things you do. If you're doing them for the right reasons. 
are we doing those things? Um, let's look at some of the specifics in Romans chapter 12. A living sacrifice, holy. What about the word holy? That's, that's, that's a big step up in, to be holy. You know, we can't even approach God's throne had it not been for Christ's gift on the cross. I mean, we're doomed to hell without that. But here Paul's throwing out the word holy. Acceptable unto God. Can we be acceptable unto God? Not without Christ we can. And be not conformed to this world. Now, that's where we're at today, isn't it? Conformed to this world. Caught up in this world. All the stuff. And that goes back to what I was asking a minute ago. Asking the same churchy people that go to church to do the same stuff. As opposed to asking the people that don't go to church. Because that's getting the gospel out, right? I mean, that's what we're supposed to do. Not keep asking the same people that you see on Wednesdays and Sundays to go do the same things. But talking to the people that are not. Right. here on Sundays and Wednesdays. That's the people we have to reach, guys. Amen. As Christians, that's the people we have to reach. And if we don't do that, who's going to? I see Tammy get to work every year three or four times because she sees the kids that come through as eighth graders. That, and we've talked about this with Brother Jack because he's went up there and talked to their SWAT club and different things like that. That's the age group, six, seven, eighth grade. Because by the time you get to be a freshman, out here, if you're not, you know, involved in church, I can see it happening every day that we're out there. And we stand to contest this. If you if you don't know Christ by then, the chances of you becoming a Christian while you're in high school slim to none. It's because of the people you hang with. When you're sixth, seventh, eighth grade, that's the time that you're most open to the gospel. From the time you get out there, you're more worried about being conformed to this world, about fitting in, having friends, doing stuff things and if we don't if we're not that type of witness to those people when they get to Scott High I mean chances are slim guys people literally going to hell all the time because we are conformed to this world we're more concerned about everything else and I'm the biggest hypocrite, hypocrite here when it comes to being consumed with everything else my job, coaching, all that stuff takes a lot of my time. I mean, like fall break, I told somebody tonight jokingly I was going to take next week off for fall break because I had a game Monday, had a game last night, had practice Wednesday, and then had the football game that I had to work tonight. So I was going to take my break next week. So even when I'm off, I'm not off. And that's not fair to the family. But who else is not fair to? Hey. You know, we get tore up a lot of times when something doesn't go our way, and yet well, I don't even know if God's on the back burner. I don't even know if He's in the kitchen. And that's where we are. Um, Mark chapter 7. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes. Now, these are the religious people of the time, and they're going to be talking to Jesus here. Um, which came from Jerusalem. When they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. And basically, all it is, they came, they ate supper, and they didn't wash their hands. You guys, parents, ever tell you to wash your hands before you eat? I tell you all the time because he's always handling animals of some sort. <laughs> and so, we always tell them to wash your hands. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands off, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. Tradition. When they came from the market, except they washed, they eat not, and many other things there be, which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Jesus, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? So they're really concerned about this tradition of, you know, having to wash your hands and everything before you eat. Okay? Jesus, he answered and said unto them, well hath his eyes to prophesize in, uh, of you hypocrites, as it is written. This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. 
Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such things as you do. And he said to them, Full ye, Well, ye reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own tradition. So Christ really hammers them back here. He says, You guys are worried about tradition and you're rejecting the commandments of God. And he goes on to explain you know, what, what he's talking about there and he calls them hypocrites. So my question is to you tonight, guys. People honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Are we just kind of going through the motions? Are we just kind of being like, yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm a good guy. I don't get out and drink, do drugs, or those types of things. That's a pretty low bar to set. I mean, really. Just because you don't do those things. that That's the standard? It's not much of a standard, guys. How many of us are really selling out and doing what we can for God? For the right reasons. Proverbs 23, 7 there. Are we really thinking about eternity in heaven and what we're going to be able to throw down at Christ's feet? I mean, you know, we you guys have been in church for a long time. You've heard all the, the messages, Christ's crucifixion, all that. Everything that he done and gave up for us so that we could have eternal life in heaven. Everybody's great for heaven. Everybody is glad to escape hell. That's all great and wonderful. But are we honoring him? Or are we just giving him lip service? Something to think about because we've been on fall break. I would hope and pray that you guys take it to heart because we're going back to school next week to really think about um, what's our reasonable sacrifice. The biggest mission field some of you will ever have walking shoulder to shoulder with you every single day. Let me ask you this. Man, it's hard, Brother Eric. Yeah, I know this. I didn't say it was easy. Nobody ever said it was going to be easy. But what if one or two of you start doing? In the lunchroom. I think I was teaching several weeks ago. I was talking about seeing some of you guys stop and pray over lunch. One person at the table, then two, then everybody else like, oh yeah, better pray. Good, you need to pray at lunch. That's great. But what if you started witnessing and doing what you were supposed to as a Christian, as a group? Not with your churchy group friends, but getting out and talking to the other people that are there. You know, I'd say probably 40% of the kids at Scott High go to church regularly, maybe. That may be too high, but never anything to say. You're there, all, you're there all the time, Brother Gary. What do you think? Maybe 40? You're a math teacher. So 800 kids, 60%. Is that about 500 kids? So there's huh? 500 kids. <laughs> so there's your percentages. 500 kids every, every day that you guys walk shoulder to shoulder with. <clears throat> they probably don't know Christ. They probably maybe have never been to church. What about those people? They have an opportunity. We know it's good that uh, families go to church, stay in church, bring the kids to church. And I think that's the problem that we have today. We have a lot of uh, good families and we have a lot of good kids because I see them come through the halls all the time. I can tell the kids that are raised right and, you know, that's great. But is that is that all we want to be is just well-behaved? When are we going to step out of the comfort zone and come up here to reasonable sacrifice, reasonable service? That's what you guys need to be thinking about. Every day when you walk past somebody, is that person going to heaven or hell? Have I told anybody today, much less this week, not your friends, not the cool kid club, not the ones that go to church all the time, the other people. I was reading uh, earlier this week, in my Bible reading, it talks about the guy that's having the wedding, and uh, none of the guests are going to come, so he goes out in the highways and hedges and gets people to come. Because the regular people that were supposed to come to the wedding wouldn't come, so he gets really angry. 
because the church people wasn't there. But he goes out and gets people to fill the pews. Are you guys willing to go out to the highways, the hedges, where the other people are? All right, let's bow our heads. If you got questions or concerns or anything like that, I'm sure uh, Brother Gary, Brother Jack, myself will be around. Miss Beth's here. Uh, Miss Tammy's here. If any young, any young ladies need to talk to anybody, uh, I'm not going to do an off call or anything like that. But I would like to just take for a minute and you guys think about one thing before we pray and dismiss. I want you to sit and think about two people that you either have class with or they sit across table from you or two tables over at lunch or whatever it is that you know for a fact that they don't go to church I want you to think about those two people get their face in your head if you know their name get your, get their name in, in your head think about those two people people that you know not here tonight that won't be in church Sunday think about them and I want you to think about them tomorrow and Sunday and then Monday I want you to think about it one more time. And think, is it worth your pride for you to go ask them and talk to them about God? You know, you can't go, you know, straight in. It's like, hey, are you going to heaven or hell when you die? But you can go talk to them about something else. Make some leeway. Think about that person right now. Those two people. Think about them tomorrow. Think about them Sunday. When you get up Monday, don't forget. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, we come to you and we love and thank you for your mercy and goodness and all that you've given us. We thank the chance to be here tonight. Thank these young people. Thank the chance uh, the ministry of this church. We pray, Lord, you'll speak and move in hearts and lives over the next few days. Help us to remember uh, the other people. Help us to be a witness and better Christians for you. And we praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Okay.